That's right. Although, let's try to, to get away from just plugging into the formulas and use a little bit more common sense. So, what is the minimum energy photon um, that would free an electron here? 2.3. Yeah, 2.3. What are the units on that? Okay. So, the minimum energy photon that would free a, an electron here is 2.3 electron volts. All right, and how can we figure out the frequency of this photon? Um, the energy of the photon is equal to the electron Okay, good. So, plug in the of the frequency. Good. Now, there's a complication. Uh, remember, we looked up Planck's constant, but remember, what were the units for Planck constant? Joules times seconds. But joules is not the same unit as electron volts, which means that this is not consistent. So we're going to have to do a unit conversion, and this comes up on almost all the problems in this section. You have to keep converting from electron volts to joules. That's a common mistake for people to forget to do that. Um, so we're going to have to convert from the electron volts to joules. There should be a conversion ratio in your inside front cover. So let's see if we can find that conversion ratio between electron volts and joules. Right, you can see it's under energy. Um, one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. One electron volt is 1.6. By the way, it's no coincidence because, uh, well, it's easy to remember if you remember this is the charge on an electron or a photon. It's not hard to explain why this is the same number as the charge on an electron or a photon, but uh, maybe we won't spend time on that today. But anyway, the number here is the same as the charge on an electron or a photon. So how would we use that to do the conversion? Okay, that's good. And it's good that you didn't do the unit conversion in your head, but you wrote it down as a formal unit conversion, because otherwise it's easy to multiply when you should divide, or divide when you should multiply. So we use this conversion ratio to cancel out the electron volts, and that tells us uh, that we should be multiplying here. All right, so that puts us in joules. Good. Yeah, what did you get for that again? Uh, 5.55 Good, and the units on that are? Right, now first of all, we know from our knowledge of frequency that this must come out in hertz, which is cycles per second, or per second. Remember that hertz could also be called one over seconds, or maybe most intuitively, cycles per second. There's a bunch of different ways to think about hertz. Let's just, uh, it actually is uh, helpful here to actually plug the units into the formula. So I've actually plugged the units into the formula here. The energy is in joules. Remember that Planck's constant is joules times seconds. Planck's constant is joules times seconds. And since I wanted to get frequency by itself, I didn't just divide by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. I also divided by the joules in the seconds. Well, then the joules would cancel on the left-hand side, but that leaves us with 
per second, which is the correct units for frequency. Uh, again, it's easier to interpret this as cycles per second. But anyway, you can all, cycles is kind of a disappearing unit. You can put that in whenever it's convenient and take it out. Uh, but anyway, you can see that the units here work out for the frequency. There's actually some, uh, some value to plugging in the units into this formula to see how the units come out. So we got this frequency. And this is a reasonable frequency, um, I think, for electromagnetic radiation or light. Okay, well, this is a very standard type of problem that we just went through, so it's important to get uh, comfortable with this here. So a couple things to point out. Very important to highlight in your notes, you can't use this formula unless you're in joules because H is in joules. However, probably your other numbers might be in electron volts. So we need to keep looking up this conversion ratio so we can transfer from electron volts to joules. There are other ways to get around this. You could use a version of Planck's constant that's in electron volts. But that's not what your textbook does. I don't think that's what the homework does. So in this course, we'll just stick with the Planck's constant that's in joules, and then you just always have to do this conversion. That gives you a little more insight into what you're doing. By the way, notice how much energy did this photon have? 3.68 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, a very small amount of energy. You can see why electron volts could be more convenient. This is a nice, an easier number to work with. So you can see an electron volt is much smaller than a joule. So it's much more appropriate for the subatomic level um, over here. And this gave us the frequency of the photons. Okay. Now, notice how your first instinct here was to try to use our formula about the maximum kinetic energy is the energy of the photon minus phi. Now, you could use that, but I think it's really better to just think through the logic like we went through here. If you were going to use that formula, though, just like we said, if we want the minimum energy, we would want a case where we were getting the electron out with zero energy. But then we just get what we have here, that you want to set the electro energy of the photon equal to the work function. I think it's really easier to work through the logic here. Let's say we wanted to figure out what wavelength this photon was at. How would you do that? Sounds good. What's the equation that relates frequency and wavelength? Equals wavelength? Good. Or maybe the most basic form of that is this equation. I'm going to use C here because we're talking about light and electromagnetic radiation and we'll be dealing with vacuum or air where the speed is C. All right, and you can clearly use this to solve for F or lambda. This is why we said earlier that F and lambda are inversely related. Um, what's the units for energy? Joules. Joules. Or now electron volts, although joules are the standard unit. Um, what's our unit? Uh, but in order to use this formula, you've got to use joules. In order to use this formula, you've got to use joules. Uh, what's the unit for frequency? Right. right, which is also cycles per second or per seconds. And what's the unit for lambda? All right, so this is another of our little flow charts that you need to have in your notes. This is something you're sure to have to do on the test, going back and forth between energy, frequency, and lambda. And let me be more specific here. Again, we should always write this formula as energy of a photon equals H times frequency of a photon, because the way we would deal with the energy of, say, an electron is completely different. We only use this formula for photons. I wanted to emphasize that because that's a common student mistake. This equation is only for photons, not for particles with mass. OK. And by the same token, remember that we saw that electrons can be treated as waves as well. So electrons also have a wavelength. But this is not the flowchart for the electrons. This is the flowchart for photons. So this is our photon flowchart. Uh, maybe later we'll get into the electron flowchart. Okay.